Thank you, Mario, for being here. And congratulations, 30 years of Mario Cuccinelli Architects. Yeah, I feel all this weight from the, all these years of work, but it's okay, thanks. Um, in case you don't know, Mario has been in a, in a very conscious search for sustainability since he was working with Renzo Piano, then started his own practice, a uh, multidisciplinary practice, because the challenges of the built environment are not just reduced to architecture. Also, he has uh, started a non-profit called Green Building Futures, where he uh, continues this research in, around materials and to put sustainability. And also, in an academic way, through School of Sustainability. So he's really committed. Um, and today, he's showing us what sustainability should be and how could we address it at Salone. Yesterday, I saw your talk, and I understood uh, an interesting critical view because we talk about sustainability, sustainability, yeah. and we're in a moment in which it's becoming real that the energy crisis is going to push us into finally take action. Yeah. So welcome, <laughs> and please tell us. Thank you. Maybe we can start on what you are showing at Salone. Yeah, Salone, you know, this year is dedicating to sustainability, you know? and uh, these, the people from Salone asked me to make an exhibition. I said, well, it's a very large space. Say, so how we can make an exhibition about sustainability because the world is sometimes is using, you know, you don't really understand anymore what does it mean, you know, because everything's come sustainable. So for my first thought was, we design a landscape inside the Salone where the people can gather in together. So uh, for me, the most important point that we back together and maybe this installation make people stay together. So they, there's a restaurant, there's a bar, there's a talk area, then you can sit, there's a table, then you can read the book. We make a selection of books, then people can also understand what would be some reference book about uh, sustainability, about biology, philosophy, you know, this kind of a open mind in sustainability. So it's the place to say together, and then we select 20 materials that came from nature, not from uh, oil. So there's a, a selection for designers and architects to show the, this ecological transition that we talk a lot. I don't know, I'm sure in many countries we talk about this. But in some way, it's already started. We, I think the word transition is very important because we are really start. We are in the beginning, not yet arrive in the end. But this material select from the nature, no? from uh, the fish scale is the, one of the big industry. And then is the waste, is the scale of a fish. And the company, French, they make panels because they extract cellulose from that and use the scale, and it's a beautiful material. Other people are using skin of a mango, and they make fake leather, beautiful. So you can see that many people already start to see maybe we can use nature as our natural resource, and that's possible, so you can really see that. And I feel it's a, a very positive message, you know, because you know, this year was a kind of dramatic time, you know, for the Ukrainian and uh, Russian. This kind of world is terrible. But also arise the dependence. We depend to oil and gas so much. So we are not yet really start to change. We're still on that kind of world. So the Salone message is so strong to say there is a material. And also, there's a lot of company in that pavilion, number 15, there's already engaged. I'm not sure, I don't want to say they solving the problem, but they engage to do it. And this, that's why it's so important. Yeah, in a way, we as society have been very lazy because we were having all this energy, almost like we used to say for free, we were having this crazy kind of growth. But now we, we really need to make an effort and why, why do you think that it's so hard? Because the materials, they are there. There are people who are finding how to grow it, how to take it from organic sources. Why we have been so lazy? Well, I think this is a long story, you know. i just give an example in architecture. No? We did beautiful cities, beautiful buildings before the Industrial Revolution. So before we have so much energy available, made by vapors, oil, gas, 
we did live it for centuries or, or thousand years without, no? So what's happened then, we came lazy because we had a lot. And it, it was a moment of optimistic moment, you know, because in, the, in a very short time, we have so much energy, so much food, so much, and then we waste. The problem is not about only consumption, it's the fact that we waste a lot of things. We waste energy, we waste food. So now it's time to back to our roots, like buildings, no? You know, we, we have an agenda, Agenda 2030, 2050, Europe, no? Said we need to, they, we want to arrive in 1950 a zero two emission. Zero CO2 emission is a very ambition program, very ambition. Okay, these are 30 years in front of us, okay. 2030, 60% less. And my thought was, but how we did before? How we did before? No, that's the point, no, because sometimes you need to look innovation in the future with a little mirror here to look in the past, you know? because enough you, you make a wrong direction. So I was making a little book about the future is the journey in the past, N not because I'm nostalgic, I'm not nostalgic, but I say I need the knowledge to face in this agenda and the, and, the, and, the, and, and the knowledge is there, it's behind us. How we made building with natural ventilation, we did for century. How we did building with, material that you can change and reuse. We did for centuries. So I'm saying knowledge is there. We don't want to do again building we did. That's not the point. But maybe with that knowledge and then capacity of today of tools we have, we can really face in that challenger and maybe that will be really the challenge of the future. So uh, I'm very excited. We, we did this house, I don't know if, yeah, this one is a, Oh, okay, it's a printing house. There's a many, many 3D printing around the world. Okay, that's, that's okay. This is the first house was printing by Hurt. Like digging a hole in your garden, select the, the Hurt, putting on the printer and printing house. So this is a broken a paradigm of zero to emission, that's zero. There's no travel, no concrete, nothing. And uh, it's uh, zero to emission. Yes, there's only an um, electrical machine just printing the house. So I don't want to say this is the future because I will be wrong to tell you, but this is broken a paradigm. Yes, we can do it. We can maybe, this is the first step of research. Maybe in other architects, which we very, there's many that try to do it. Maybe we need to work in the material, maybe we need to work in the shape. There's a lot of work, but this is showing that is one way it's possible. That's why this house was so important. And there was a lot of people exciting from everywhere in the world asking, wow, I can do a house with a hurt. Hurt is everywhere in the planet. I only buy a printer. Printing is a very simple machine. It's a very basic, it's a mechanical nozzle. The point, the technology is not in the printer. This is a mechanical thing. The technology is in the design, the tools, the digital tools. So this house, before it was built, we knew exactly the performance. We know exactly the answer of thermic, thermical answer. We exactly know what the temperature is in. So they are all tools that we never, never had before. So I was able to simulate it, the performance of the house for that climate to know that the thickness of the wall, the density of material was perfect for that climate. So, and that's how they don't need anything. They don't need cooling, they don't need heating, they don't need anything. So I'm saying maybe this idea of innovation is not muscular, it's not mechanical, it's digital. It's how architects are able to design buildings. That's the key point. Well, as, as you say, this is not new. In a, in a way, we were building before from yeah. Earth, yeah. but now the, reached the moment in which technology got to a point in which we can integrate it and yes. integrate and in a way rediscover uh, how we did proper things in the past. And I'm very happy that technology is finally entering into architecture because imagine in the world, finance, healthcare, IT, everything has been revolutionized thanks to technology, but in architecture and construction, we're behind but not because it's not relevant, because it's hard, because this is not lines of codes. Here we have to move atoms, we have to move things 
And also we need the commitment of the industry because again, in the other industries, perhaps you can have a group of motivated young engineers working from their apartment, but here you need lines of assembly, big spaces, a lot of machinery. Well, b building industry is the most conservative industry because for the simple, simple reason, if I may do this window and these windows work, why I need to change? It's perfect, it's working. So, and make building is very complicated. It's, I, I just remember with an architect, rules and regulation are, are very complicated. It's not so easy, you know, I'm saying, I'm doing this work for many, many years, and I find it's tend to be more simple, it's coming more complex, because uh, the complexity of regulation and material, and the climate and also the environment impact. So it's more and more information you need to develop in, in the design, you know? But the industry is very slowly because building need to be stand up, need, building need to be working, they need to be useful. So it's, it's a complicated place. But I think now the agenda is coming very, very strong and also the market, say more speculative market, like a developer, they find they cannot sell any more building without any attention to the environment. Because company, they asking more attention to the people's work, the workers, people. They want to people living better in their buildings. They want people to be safe. They want people they feeling good. So that's you know in the past maybe you know then. The, we, we, we concentrated so much technology in buildings, then building was against the climate. Closing windows don't open, only mechanical. Then after a while we discovered the people become sick because it was too perfect. You know, it's the only place, I'm always talking with this, the developer. You know, we are in the bar, you know, this window, the door is open. It's hard to take away my jacket. Then I'm going in an office building, 22 degrees and 65% humidity control, fix all day. 501 lux, fix all day. You know how much cost in terms of environment? If you say comfort zone is between 21 to 28, then completely change the mechanism of working on the buildings, completely. If I'm saying maybe humidity between 60 and 75, 80, I can accept this variation. It's completely changed the size of machine, the energy you use. And if I want to do a building with no machine, I can't do it because I can't approve by the rules. So if I, I, I did once in a, for the European Commission here in Milan, a building, it was a canteen, you know? and it was a, a retrofit project. You know? And the budget was based in how much energy was able to save in 10 years. That was my budget, you know? I said, okay, we don't need a machine. And the guy who's approved the building said, no, I can't because I need approval by a stamp and I need to write what exactly temperature is on that day. So, so you need to work in also in legislation and help the politician to make a change because ambition are very high. All of you, all of us, politicians want to change, but then you need to have rules on the table, especially in buildings. Buildings is a rule regulations. Now, for sure that the has always been a, a challenge, the relation between legislation with the politics and architecture, and we have always, uh, as architects, we always talk about it. But now I think that in this moment appears someone that used to be outside, that is the user. Now yes. people demand from, demand from authorities, but they also demand from architecture. Especially, I, I see very strongly that after the pandemic, when many people were forced to be inside, they were questioning, why, why am I living in such conditions? Who did this? And with the availability of information on the internet, people are also getting closer to architecture. They are seeing that there are buildings that can improve your quality of life, and they say, I want this. How can I have this type of architecture? How can I work with this architect? Or maybe, can I do this? So thanks to technology, I, I have the feeling that very soon, the complex process of the architect is going to reduce, 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 and architects are going to be able to scale what they give to society and work closer with people. How, how do you see this, this kind of relation? Yeah, well, information about quality in buildings is 
is quite diffuse, so people can check. I, I remember I did a project for housing and and the contractors started to sell the house, you know, and the couples, people came with the regulation, they printing regulations, say, oh, but your house standard is 42 decibel for the windows. So that's mean people. You know, the digital world is make people more knowledge about. So, and they were asking, no, oh, are your buildings uh, referring to this uh, regulation about uh, uh, healthy? So this is a new way the people are approaching the buildings, no? the way they, they know. No? And I think like the digital, like the house, but we did also a school and uh, the distance between an architect and construction has become shorter no? because we design every single pieces and we did a, a, a kindergarten is made by wood uh, panels and every single panels was designed by us, sent directly to the manufacturing the manufacturers cutting all the pieces and then bring it on site. So we shorter that kind of a, um, a relation between all the step of a construction, which is given to architects, of course, more responsibility because you need to design properly. But I, I think there is more and more request by, by people to try to live in better in their buildings. And I think that is uh, after the pandemic, you know, I don't know in many other countries, but I, I know exactly what's happened in Italy. And architects, they are not really uh, listen for many years. Architects are stars, no? But they don't, uh, journalists, they don't call in architects for opinion, no? Then, not all, of course. But uh, during the pandemic, the architects was called every day, say, oh, can you tell what's the city of tomorrow? the future of housing, how are we going to live in the future? Say, well, you never asked me in the last 20 years, now you ask me because it's a problem. But this question is because a lot of people asking what will be the scenario? How are we going to live because I'm working at home? How can change my house? And many people realize they, they bought the wrong house because they're going to live in for months instead of living over all, all the night. Say, oh, maybe... I, that's not useful to do something else, no? And, uh, and also a lot of demand of very simple things. Like people now want a house with a terrace because it was a dramatic for many people living, in, especially in the city center, in the old part of the city. There is a, a wall, beautiful, but nothing else. You cannot open the windows, you don't have any space. I, f I really remember the video in the city of Milan or Bologna. The social life, it was on the terrace. It was uh, after the wall, there was a terrace and every, all the social life was in this small terrace where people can talk and they see each other. So the demand is how we can make house, then at least it's a terrace, at least it is a, a common and social place. And this is demand then developer now you know, try to solve it in the new buildings. So I like this idea then this idea of sustainability become something really related to the quality of our life. It's not a technical issue, also not solely, but it's about how we can live better together in the cities. This is the, is the goal, the final goal. No? Uh, thank you for sharing how you are seeing this and in a way, opening a little glimpse into the future, you said this is like, in a way, normal to print houses, but for me, it's opening a tremendous uh, future and winning a tipping point because, as we were talking before, once you reach the perfect prototype, to do one or 1,000 is trivial and we go take the leap. Yes, we, we are now working to print another house here in Milan for September. But the research we did, it was not about the shape of the building. That's something we can, we know how to do it, but the material. Because you cannot print in house only by hurt. Because, you know, the technology there is not a classic one like called pisé, you know, when you press the hurt, you know, and become hard. And then also when the rainy stay there, there's a many cities in the Morocco, or in Persia, they're still there after a thousand years are made by her. But technology is different because the nozzle just leaving wet hurt. You know? 
and wet earth that don't have very structure, no? So how you combining the humidity, you know, when you make a wall, the, the last part is dry and the top is wet. And when it's coming wet, it's not stable. And when this, your curve is, is the moment they collapse. So the shape of the house is the maximum of the curve we can do before the earth collapsing. No. So it's, it's a technical issue, it's a design issue. You know. Now we are working with a company where we need to make some additive, something to make the, the heart hard. No. But the measure is 85% and 15% of product to make these things hard. Sometimes it's a natural resign, came from nature, combine it with heart and then make this waterproofing because the idea is to use it some material that can I replicate so I can make more. So if I miss house, make a design and and build house with 90% of hurt, 10% of resign, or some other product to make me the hurt hard, we still 90% less than today, which is mean a lot. And it's turned up and is matching regulation. So it will be a big step. So in, there are two lines. One is the design, one is the material, how you combine it, the shape with material. So that, that is the game of architecture. That, I mean, if you look in the skyscraper, the first one, you know, in Buffalo or in uh, some American cities, the first was in stone. You know, and there was seven floor, eight floor, ten floor. Then the steel structures came and then just zoom. And they and they using stone outside to keep in the building looks like stone, but it was a was a steel structure, but they was able to pull up so much. So technology, and 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 language they are always working together. So that's is the moment, you know, where material can change the shape, change the dimension. Maybe you can make two floor, three floor. So that's is is there is there research? There's something we missing. Well, I'm missing is. We are not doing too much research in buildings. You need to prototype. You need to make some wrong decision. You need to make some wrong prototype. But you, it's a learning process of innovation. You know? Like you said before, in the medical area, pharmaceutical area, they make years and years of trying to find the right molecular. They, they fail many, many times. And then they get the point. So in architecture, it's the same. You need you need to do try and make, make make experiment, and then we can get the point. Now, and I think that the pressure to make our build environment better is going to push a lot of different interests to make this and to take the the risk from venture capital, not just architecture, engineers, everybody. If you want to learn more about Tecla, you can see it on our daily, along with a, a very diverse. Uh, career of buildings by Mario. But also I want to now give you the opportunity if you want to ask any questions. If, if not, I tell you something else. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hopefully, yes. Uh, I'm a journalist from Slovakia. Hi. I'd like to ask, whenever we discuss you know, the architecture of the future, technology, sustainability. I believe almost half of the planet still doesn't live in a country where there's enough water and electricity. So maybe skipping all the steps that we had the time to do in Europe isn't really sustainable for them. Is there a way to incorporate their approach to building houses into what you just described? Or what is the future for countries such as, you know, India, where there's many people, not much money, not much um, technology going on? Thanks. Yes. No, I, I, I know your question. I, I know exactly what you say. We, because this is the West world. It's the rich part of the planet that play this game of sustainability. But I'm always said, we always have an option. We always plug something on the wall and get electricity. So we have always an option. Many countries, there's no option. So I think the Tecla was exactly this. Hurt is everywhere in the planet. You can produce a, a small amount of electricity with a panel, solar panel, and you can really make a new generation of builder or little house. But for sure, 
the number of construction for the next 30 years are crazy. It is a, the website from uh, Santa Fe, from uh, the guy who was winning the gold medal for AIA last year, so it's Edward Mazzaria. He made a book in 1978 called The Solar Book, a guideline for architects design building with the sun. It looks like a, a simple thing, it was like this, and showing how in the past, or in 1970, 1980, architects was really dealing with the sun also in a very difficult condition or how to make a design with no need of energy, you know? We forgot that, you know? But I, I always show in a picture, which is not here, but uh, if you're watching this site, it's called 20, Architectural 2030. It's to give you the scenario of how much square meter we're gonna build in the future. And the numbers are unsustainable because like we are, the numbers more or less is like this, is, is 180, um, 110, 180 billion square meter built at today. And today that is the planet, 180 billion square meter. And 2060, we're gonna build 230 billion square meter more. This is the scenario for China, India, South America, Africa, so the question is, how are we gonna do that? We still talk about the shortage of material, how this population can they reach a limit, a, an, I say, a normal standard, don't say high standard, but a normal, okay, the house with a window, is a light on, and maybe a fridge or TV or, or ground. So that's, we, this is the problem. So I think what we can do I, I was the West world, instead to send containers or tent, maybe it's sharing technologies innovation. That's the only way we can help or we can transfer the information you know, to make things better and more efficient. I think that's what, why I also the Europe decided to invest so much in, legis in legislation because in all the world, there's only Europe make a plan for the future. <laughs> In 2030, 2050 is only Europe. In the United States, they tried with Barack Obama, but the Green Deal was more or less not happened. So I think this is the role of Europe in, in relation to other countries to help them through the experience to ex some exchange information and knowledge. But it's a, it's a, a problem with no answer. We, I don't know how we can do that. But if I say something else. You must watch in something very interesting. It's a video from Professor Mancuso. He's a, a, a how you say in English? Um, so he's a, he's, a, he's a professor in Florence. He's believed the plant have a brain. Hmm? So he's a bio, bio, biologist and neurologist of plants. So of course, you cannot find it, the brain, but how plants are intelligent, no? And how much the plant can tell us the adaptation of climate, or how plant they adapt for many, many, many millions of years. So plants are in the planet from 250 million years. Hmm? Homo sapiens, 300,000 years. So it's the gap of knowledge huge. Millions difference, no? So if you look that, you can see <clears throat> that maybe we are still have something to learn from plants, no? How they adapting? Why the shape like this? So I always make an example of a cactus. You know the rounded cactus. So they live in a really extreme context. There's no water mainly, no? but the shape means when the sun is high, half of the sphere is under shade and the leaves are triangular, meaning half of the leaves is not under sun. So it's in a hot climate, but the shape make this plant half of the time under shade. The top of the plant, the cactus, is full of spine, very dense, but very white, because it's the, mo it's the point where sun is strong, so it reflect more light, it absorb less energy from the sun. And all around the plants is a spine, no? Of course, a spine is, is because it's defend from animals. They're looking for wet things. But the most important things of this 
is because when the change between day and night, this spine is condensing water on the air and bring water from the air. So this plant find water is not on the ground, but in the humidity of the air. How they know? How they know? That is a question. How, how plant know? So I think if you study this, you discover how much plant was able to adapt into climate, and we are not yet there. We talk about how buildings can adapt to climate change. Our buildings are not are not made for that, or at least maybe in the past, but today not. So maybe the past is interesting because it's a knowledge, but also plant that can tell us so many stories. I don't want to say we need to design a building with spine and a shape like this, but the way half of the building is under shade during in an hot climate is very important. So you maybe need to think in before design what the principle, and you discover then the shape can be designed to follow that problem. So it's a learning process. And I think we have so many information around us and sometimes make me crazy that we are not looking for that. No? So it's about knowledge. But now we will have to. Yes, we must do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Thank you. <laughs>